today's video is going to be a little bit different. As you can tell by the title, we're going to look at four tips to help you produce better looking footage in Final Cut Pro by color correcting and color grading it. But I'll be the first to tell you, when it comes to color correction and color grading, while I do understand the basics of it, there are people out there that know it far better than me. So in order to provide you guys with the best possible information, I brought in someone who can explain this topic much better than I can. An amazing filmmaker whose work speaks for itself. Take it away, Dylan. Hey Serge, thank you for having me on the channel, my friend. I am beyond stoked to be with you guys today. My name is Dylan, I am a filmmaker and editor and I have a channel called Dylan John which has a lot of Final Cut Pro and filmmaking tutorials. Today we're gonna go over four tips to help you produce better looking color graded footage in Final Cut Pro. The first tip is to make sure you color correct your shots first, then you color grade them. Color correcting your shot basically just means you correct your shot's white balance, saturation and contrast so it looks more natural to what our eyes see. The reason we do this is because it makes it easier to color grade and stylize our shots later and allows for a more consistent grade. So the first thing I usually do when color correcting is ask myself, does this look like what it would look like if I was actually here? And looking at this shot, it does not. There's too much of a reddish tint. So I'm gonna open up my color curves, which is one of my most used color correction tools, and I'm going to head to the red curve. If you don't know how the curves work, basically you have the highlights in your your shot towards the top and the shadows in your shot towards the bottom. By pulling down on the curve you are reducing the amount of that color in the shot and by raising it you are adding more. So here I'm just going to make a slight pull down in the center of my curve so it affects my whole shot. Shadows, midtones, and highlights. And you can already see that's making a big difference. But it still doesn't look totally natural. Look at the shadows here. They're a little too blue. So head to the blue curve and we will adjust the shadows by pulling down towards the bottom of the curve so the shadows are affected the most. If you need to make a more precise adjustment, add a little anchor point and then pull down. I'm going to pull down slightly in my highlights as well because there's still just a bit too much blue casting in the bright parts here. Last thing for the correction, I need to adjust the contrast a bit. So I'll head up to the luma curve and create a slight S curve to darken some of the shadows and bring up the midtones and highlights a tad. And look at that! It's always surprising when you turn the color correction off and on. I always think to myself, how is that not so obvious in the first place? This next tip takes literally two seconds and it can help to provide a cleaner look to your shots. This is something I usually do towards the end of my color grading workflow. So we have this shot of my buddy Justin here. I've already color corrected and color graded it, but if we look at the brightest part of our image, being these glaring spotlights, you will notice that the color grading process has cast a tint to this bright light light. This should be white and it is now a little green. So let's clean this up. We're going to open up our hue saturation curves, head down to the luma versus sat curve. And if this sounds like a different language to you, you can remember it this way. Luma is referring to the bright parts and dark parts of our image. No color involved. And the factor that we'll be changing in those bright and dark parts is the saturation or sat. Saturation is just the intensity of color in an image. So in this curve, we can change the intensity of color in the different exposure values. So let's take out the saturation in the very bright part here. Press the dropper and we're going to select this bright part. The spot I picked obviously is very bright, so when the point is made on the curve it is made to the far right, signifying that it is really bright. I'm going to add another point to the left of it to keep the rest of the curve stable and I will decrease the saturation in just the very bright part of the shot by dragging down the points here. Look at the difference that makes. The same can be done for your darkest blacks. Generally, you don't want your darkest shadows saturated with color. It's just unnatural looking. So open up the hue versus sat curve, select a very dark part in your image, and decrease your saturation. Little side note, make sure that this step is at the end of the color grading process because for example, if I just move this color wheel after the correction we just made, you'll see that the correction doesn't play a role the way we want it to anymore. Two more useful pointers left. Thank you guys for staying with me so far. So this tip should be done near the end of the color grading process and it is to use shape masks to help your talent pop. So I've color corrected and done kind of a natural grade to this, a little teal and orange look, but this model just doesn't pop out in the shot. She is walking down a makeshift runway in a hotel here with no lighting system set up, so just overhead lights. So let's help her out. Add a color board or color wheels, click the mask button in the top right, and add a shape mask. I'm going to form a long oval shape over the talent. 
This outside circle is to feather the changes being made. Basically, just how gradual the effect is. I'm going to increase the highlights and midtones a tad. Then I'm going to click outside and lower my shadows and midtones a bit. And boom, look at that, it makes a huge difference. She is moving though, so I will need to press the keyframe button, skip a few frames, and make adjustments, and so on, so the mask is following on top of her. My last tip is to use the range check feature and scopes while color grading. Range check automatically tells you if your shot is too bright or too dark. It also tells you if your shot is oversaturated. So for example, with that shot where we color corrected the spotlights shining at the camera, if we turn off that curve correction that we made and then turn on our range check by going to view, going all the way down to range check and clicking saturation, you'll notice that zebras pop up letting us know that these spots in our shot are oversaturated saturated. Once we turn on our curve correction that we made though, it goes away. With the Luma check, if I happen to raise my highlights above 100 IRE or my shadows below 0 IRE, thus cutting out detail in my image, you'll notice that these zebras pop up again warning me that I've crossed those lines. If you click all, you can have both of those parameters up at the same time. However, just because range check is a thing doesn't mean you shouldn't use your video scopes. They are immensely useful and will allow you to determine if, say, your subject's skin is actually their skin color. I have an in-depth tutorial all about scopes in Final Cut that you can find on my channel for those interested in learning more about the topic. That's it for me, guys. I want to thank Serge once again for having me on. I hope that some of these uh, tips and points prove to be of some value to you. If they were, make sure to press the thumbs up button and check out my channel when you can. Serge will be hosting a guest tutorial on my channel as well, so make sure to support him in that too. Thanks again, Serge. That was amazing. So much helpful information there. Thank you, Dylan. I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with Dylan's work, but just in case you're not, make sure to go check out his channel. Tons of good stuff there. And while you're there, if you found this video helpful, to quote Renee Ritchie, drop kick that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here in the next one.